Hello friends, in this video we will synthesize the compound which is known in short as MOED also known as Brucker's Mirocyanin. It is an organic dye which is famous for its solvatochromic property which means it changes color depending on the solvent which it is dissolved in. For this experiment we will need 28.4 grams of iodomethane which was made on one of my previous videos, 18.6 grams of 4 methylpyridine, 150 milliliters of absolute ethanol, 10 milliliters of piperidine, 14.5 grams of 4 hydroxybenzaldehyde, 20 milliliters of dry isopropanol, and 7.84 grams of potassium hydroxide pellets to make 700 milliliters of a 0.2 molar solution. Start by clamping a 100 milliliter round bottom flask in an ice bath. Add a magnetic steering bar inside. 20 milliliters of dry isopropanol was measured in a graduated cylinder and was transferred to the flask. Next, 18.6 grams of 4-methylpyridine was measured out in a graduated cylinder and that too was transferred to the flask. Magnetic steering was then turned on. To give a sneak peek of the reaction flask, I wiped off the condensate with a tissue paper. The solution shows nothing fancy but a yellow color due to the presence of 4-methylpyridine. Now, 28.6 grams of iodomethane was taken. I have kept it chilled inside a stoppered Erlenmeyer flask as it is very volatile. Iodomethane was synthesized in one of my previous videos and link to that is given in the description. Use a dropper to add the iodomethane slowly to the reaction mixture. The density of iodomethane is 2.28 grams per centimeter cube. It is pretty heavy and you can see me desperately trying to balance the iodomethane without spilling while transferring to the reaction mixture. Iodomethane is added dropwise to the flask with stirring and the flask needs to be maintained in the ice bath and we do not want the methyl iodide to escape out as its boiling point is only 42 degrees C. Once whole of the iodomethane is added, the flask still appears as if no reaction has occurred owing to the yellow color it had previously. A dim growth condenser was attached on top of the reaction flask and the flask was immersed in a boiling water bath. The contents of the reaction flask is set to reflex for 2 hours. Now let us see what is happening here. Here, the 4-methylpyridine is methylated by iodomethane which is one of the best methylating agent. This gives rise to 1,4 dimethylpyridinium iodide which is the intermediary product which we need to collect for continuing with the next step of the synthesis. Continue reflex for 2 hours and by the end of 2 hours we notice a color change in the reaction mixture from yellow to orange. After 2 hours the reflex is stopped and the system is dismantled. The round bottom flask is allowed to cool down to room temperature. On cooling down the whole of the content solidifies and the microcrystalline product that we get is the 1,3-dimethylpyridinium iodide. Since it is one big chunk, it was poked around and the big chunks were broken down. It was then dumped into the Buchner funnel and vacuum was applied to dry it. Here you can see me desperately trying to empty down everything from the flask. The flask contained lot of dimethylpyridinium iodide stuck to it. It was all transferred to the Buchner funnel with the help of ice called ethanol. 
some ice called ethanol was used to wash the contents of the funnel the glass rod was used to give a thorough rinse to remove all the soluble impurities This is the crude product in the Buchner funnel. Now we recrystallize the crude dimethyl pyridinium iodide. 98% ethanol was used for recrystallization. On cooling down, needle shaped crystals of dimethyl pyridinium iodide separates out. The pure product was initially vacuum filtered and the product was placed in a vacuum desiccator overnight alongside anhydrous calcium chloride. Next day we got pretty dry product. Now we move on to the final part of the synthesis of MOED. A 250ml round bottom flask was clamped and fixed on a hot plate stirrer. Using a powder funnel, 28.4 grams of 1,3 dimethyl pyridinium iodide was added to the flask. 150ml of dry ethanol was added to the flask. First around 100ml was added and then 14.5g of 4-hydroxybenzaldehyde was added to the flask. Then the remaining ethanol was added to wash down the 4-hydroxybenzaldehyde stuck onto the funnel. Steering was turned on. Soon everything would dissolve in ethanol, resulting in a clear solution. Once most of it have dissolved, a funnel was placed on top of the round bottom flask and 10 ml of piperidine was added to it. Piperidine is a heterocyclic amine, which is a controlled substance in many western countries. Piperidine is toxic and causes severe skin burns and eye damage. Piperidine was added in small portions at a time. Then the flask was placed in a water bath and a dimroth condenser was attached on top. The contents of the round bottom flask was then reflexed for 24 hours. The color of the contents in the round bottom flask matches with the background color making the visibility poor. So I swapped the background to a white one. Now you can appreciate the bright red color of the reaction mixture. Now we will see the second part of the reaction which is happening. Here the dimethyl pyridinium iodide reacts with 4-hydroxybenzaldehyde in the presence of piperidine and ethanol to form the corresponding benzyl alcohol intermediate. After 24 hours the water bath and the reflex condenser were removed and the flask was allowed to cool to room temperature. You can very well appreciate the abundant bright red precipitate that have formed. It was then vacuum filtered to collect the corresponding benzyl alcohol. It was then taken out of the Buchner funnel and laid out to dry. You can very well notice the bright red color of the compound. In fact, the mobile phone camera is unable to capture the bright color of the compound. It is very pretty when observed directly. Next, we take a 1000 ml beaker. We will be making a 700 ml 0.2 molar potassium hydroxide solution. I have taken 7.84 grams of potassium hydroxide pellet and I added 700 ml of water which would give a 0.2 molar solution. Now add the previously made bright red powder to the potassium hydroxide solution. The compound very easily dissolves in it giving a deep red to almost black colored solution. Okay. 
While dissolving it created a very nice pattern. So I shot a small clip of the video in slow motion. The solution was heated gently but it was not boiled. Once everything is dissolved we get a deep red to almost black colored clear solution. After that the heating was stopped and the beaker was allowed to come down to room temperature. On cooling down deep red colored sheet like crystals were formed which is the product MOED. You can also clearly see the characteristic bright metallic sheen of the compound. The compound was then filtered by suction and then air dried. This is the final product MOED. I received 43.2 grams of the product. It has this characteristic glistening and the product itself is fluffy and light weighted. The characteristic property, the one sole reason for the synthesis of this compound is to demonstrate the solvatochromic property. That is this compound when dissolved in various solvents produces characteristic color in each particular solvent. Here you can see the wide variety of colors that the Bruckers Miro cyan introduced when it is dissolved in various solvents. In some solvents it dissolves very fast like the methanol and in the dimethyl sulfoxide. Some solvents like dichloromethane and acetone was taking a little bit longer period to dissolve. I have tried to arrange the flasks in such a manner so that you can appreciate the gradient in color. So that's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially helping me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links for both of them are given in the description. Once again thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet and click on the bell button for notifications regarding my new videos. Thank you.